नमस्कार दोस्तों वेलकम वंस अगेन एट लिट ई सिटी योर फेवरेट यूट्यूब चैनल रिलेटेड विद इंग्लिश लिटरेचर मैं सौरभ अग्रवाल आप सभी को बताना चाहता हूं कि इन दिस पर्टिकुलर सीरीज वी आर गोइंग टू डिस्कस सम वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट ड्रामाज ऑफ ट्वेंटी सेंचुरी डियर फ्रेंड्स वी विल ट्राई टू कवर ऑल दी इंपॉर्टेंट ड्रामेटिस्ट एंड देयर वर्क स्टार्टिंग फ्रॉम नाइनटीन ट्वेंटीज टू even to the end of this century meri koshish rahegi i present you provide you the most important points of the drama the story some important information if there is aur jo pehla episode hai we are going to cover four plays of the 1950s and 60s uh, we are going to discuss the homecoming by harold pinter arnold wesker's chicken soup with barley then we have edward bond's lear and joe orton's lute all these dramas are very significant in fact some of them established a particular trend for the coming uh, uh, particular vogue fashion for a particular type of drama okay so we will start our presentation and the first play we are going to discuss is the homecoming by harold pinter now i need not to tell you that harold pinter is a nobel prize recipient he won it in 2005 his plays are noted for their use of understatement small talk reticence silence theater of silence theater of meanness comedy of meanness these are the terms which are associated with harold pinter if you want to remember or write down comedy of meanness and they uh, with the help of these pauses these silences uh, pinter basically tries to convey the bumbling characters who, who are uh, always using language that is repetitive circular and it seems more realistic than the realistic drama and if we talk about his famous plays it includes the room the caretaker the birthday party the dumb waiter these are some of apart from obviously the homecoming these are his famous plays he has also written script from uh, for many movies also okay if we talk about the play the homecoming it is a two act play and it was uh, written in 1964 and first published in 1965 it premieres uh, both in london which was in 1965 and in new york which was in 1967 they both were directed by one man sir peter hall the famous director of stage plays and the original broadway production in new york won the highest award for drama in america that is tony award for best play so you can understand the popularity the critical acclaim this drama received the action of this play takes place in an old house in north london और इस घर के अंदर देयर इज ऑल मेल्स फैमिली अभी जब प्ले ओपन होता है देयर इज एन एब्यूजिव पैट्रिया होल्ड्स द कंप्लीट हाउस अंडर इज कंट्रोल एंड हिज नेम इज मैक्स ओके मैक्स इज अ रिटायर्ड बचर बचर एंड अदर मेंबर्स एट प्रेजेंट इन द हाउस आर हिज ओन माइल्ड मैनर्ड ब्रदर सो ही इज वी कैन से different from the other males of the house his name is sam and he is a chauffeur and also in the house at present are his two sons lanny a very dubious profile he is actually a pimp and joy once again a very we can say a wild youth now what is happening uh, in the play at the beginning is teddy who is the eldest son uh, and now he had been away in america for a lot of time he is a lecturer he is teaching philosophy for almost 6 years he arrives with his wife ruth so that she could meet his family for the first time actually they are touring uh, through the europe and they stop here so that ruth can meet his family 
Now, from the very outset, हम देख सकते हैं कि टैडी और रूथ की जो मैरिज है इट इज नॉट गोइंग वेरी हार्मोनियसली रूथ जो है शी इज ट्राइंग टू शो हर ओन आइडेंटिटी शी इज नॉट द वन हु कैन इजिली बी डोमेस्टिकेटेड और टेम्ड फॉर एग्जाम्पल इन ड्यूरिंग द फर्स्ट सीन जो टैडी है इंसिस्ट करता है कि uh, she should be stay inside she is tired and she must rest but jo ruth hai wo kehti hai ki no i want to take a walk and then she takes a walk uh, all the streets at night alone and uh, during her walk max sees her and uh, finds her thinks her that she is a prostitute uh, so when he first meets ruth to wo usko lagta hai she is a prostitute but when when once back in the home and teddy introduces him he is uh, at first shocked but later he welcomes her into the family and a little to openly he seems to be gleaning very happy at this fact that they have a woman in the house after a long time now in the act 2 the family is sharing a meal and some days have passed max is remembering his deceased wife jessy and he is getting somewhat emotional ho raha hai she would have loved to see everyone back together again लेकिन उसका मूड फॉरन चेंज हो जाता है बिकॉज एसोसिएशन में वो मेमोरीज के आगे चलते हुए रिमेंबर्स दैट हाउ हिज ओन मार्केट एसोसिएशन अ ग्रुप ऑफ बचर्स हैव कॉन हिम ड्यूब्ड हिम आउट ऑफ एन इन्वेस्टमेंट ऑन इट्स अ वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट सीन डियर फ्रेंड्स जो हूँ प्रिंटर के जो ड्रामा होते हैं जिनके अंदर हम प्रिंटरस्क साइलेंस एंड पॉजेस बोलते हैं दिस पर्टिकुलर सीन इज अ प्राइम एग्जाम्पल ऑफ दिस टेक्निक फॉर एग्जाम्पल देयर इज एन अंडर गोइंग टेंशन एंड द करेक्टर्स आर नॉट एबल टू डिफाइन और डिलीवर इट टेडी स्पीक्स दैट ही इज वेरी हैप्पी इन अमेरिका एंड ही वॉन्ट्स टू रिटर्न एज सुन एज पॉसिबल जबकि जो लैनी है ही ट्राइज टू नीडल हिम विथ फिलोसफिकल क्वेश्चन स्टूपिड फिलोसफिकल क्वेश्चन फॉर एग्जाम्पल रेवरिंग अनोन थिंग वर्सेज रेवरिंग थिंग दैट आर नोन विच इज बेटर थिंग दीज सीम्स टू बी सेंसलेस क्वेश्चन वन मे रिमेंबर द क्वेश्चन द इन द इंटेरोगेशन ऑफ स्टैनले इन द बर्थडे पार्टी द सेंसलेस क्वेश्चन बट दे दे बेसिकली पॉइंट्स आउट द टेंशन now recognize ruth is very observant of these competitive relationship between max and his son and ruth uh, begins to tease them uh, a kind of sexual game with them all uh, provoking she begin to provoke the brother and laws by dancing with them by provoking them sexually and they taunt each other about their uh, sexual prowess now max suggests uh, finally uh, that it would be a good a good thing to have ruth in the house so that she could uh, take care of cooking and cleaning lekin teddy jo hota hai to wo he is very much rattled about this and he says no 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 uh, we have to go back and uh, she is not well max and lenny they discuss something uh, uh, though teddy is completely denying uh, refusing to settle there but they are not paying any attention to his words and uh, they soon say that uh, she can stay here but she has to keep uh, her own living by uh, working as a prostitute and they can earn money also from her prostitution Ruth is very indifferent to these proposals drama negotiations going on and she is in fact become very we can say uh, authoritative when she has this negotiation and she says okay i am ready to stay but i need a three room flat money for clothes a maid singing a contract and signing a contract that they all agree to now the power dimension is shifting from the males it is going towards obviously ruth sam who is totally uh, sitting non challenged he appears to be rather thinking about something else suddenly he burst out that macgregor one of their uh, colleagues he had sex with his um, we can say sister in law the wife of max jessy in the back of his cab 
Now this explosive revelation because they have revered the figure of Jesse as an ideal woman, it causes him to pass out. There is, we can say, an attack uh, and he passes out and fall to the ground. Teddy resolves to return to America but he is alone in going because Ruth decides to stay and Ruth sits with her in-laws prostrated at her feet. Now it is very clear who holds the power in the household and the future is unclear for all. This particular scene, this, this particular scene uh, can show you the power dimension, how Ruth is taking the whole power and how the man who once hold the power in the house, they are almost prostrated in front of her. So it's a very, we can say, a beautiful drama which shows the power, the power equation changing. Okay. Moving to our second drama, which was once again a very popular, very uh, controversial work of the time is Kitchen Soup with Bali. It is written by Arnold Wesker, who is associated with a particular school that is Kitchen Sink Realism or Kitchen Sink Drama. As you can see, Kitchen Sink, it is related with very uh, domesticated themes, but uh, uh, also of middle class, lower middle class and their daily struggles, their, uh, we can say their dilemmas, their uh, uh, traumas, all these things are presented. Uh, Wester is a British playwright and he came to prominence during the 50s. It was the time of the Cold War when the world was divided into two ideologies. On one side we have the American capitalism and on the other side we have Russian communism or Marxism. Or ye jo left wave thi, left wing ka jo dominance tha, it was threatening Europe with new alliances. Us time mein Britain ke andar jo left wing the, unme se kuch writers jo the, Wester was one among them. His stark dramas about working class life, many of them influenced by his own childhood in a leftist Jewish family. So we can say that he is double marginalized. First, he was a leftist in highly capitalized, liberated European society. And second, he was, he came from a Jewish family in a predominantly Christian society. And he is, as I have already told you, associated with kitchen sink realism, which was a cultural movement whose protagonists, jo drama hote thi, inke jo protagonist hai, they can be described as angry young men. I know that you have heard about this name and uh, you have, you may have also heard about dramas like Look Back in Anger, which are prototype of uh, angry young men because these men were disillusioned with modern society. He was still in his 20s only when he wrote a trilogy of plays. Remember, these are important facts. This trilogy consists of these three plays, Chicken Soup with Barley, Roots, and I am talking about Jerusalem. If we talk about this particular play, it deals with the Khan family. It is a Jewish working class family. So you can understand that it is, uh, we can say it's a reflection of Wesker's own family. The, they live at the east end of London and uh, it is also an analysis of communist belief in post-war era. Pre-war era mein jo communist beliefs the, uh, second world war se pehle, they were getting stronger and stronger. Lekin jab second world war khatam hua, how these uh, communist belief, beliefs were dwindling. Actually, the play jo span karta 20 years ko anti-fascist demonstration in 1936 before Second World War and ending with the Hungarian uprising in 1956 which disillusioned many communists because of Russia attack on Hungary and it explores the disintegration of political ideology which uh, we can say a microcosmic study is the parallel disintegration of a family. The family is matriarchal because Sarah, who is the mother, she holds the family together. Jo baki members hai, wo hai, her husband Harry, who is a very much, we can say, a realistic kind of person and their two children, Ada and Ronnie. 
Now, when the first act takes place, it is October 4, 1936, and there are a com grouping of communist Jews and dogs workers. They are gathered for preventing a fascist march of black shirts. Black shirts was a union of fascists, and they were uh, they were basically planning to make a march to the east end of London. Harry has taken Ada and Ronnie to relatives so that he can keep them away out of any harm. Sarah is actively involved in preventing this march and Harry is afraid of any physical action. He says that it is better to discuss ideas than to involve in direct conflict. There are some Jewish boys also, Monty, Prince and Dave, they all are very much excited because they want to feel the direct confrontation. Then in the second scene, it is the same evening and now the protesters, these communists and uh, Jewish people, they have successfully forced the cancellation of this march. Jaime, who is Sarah's brother, he has been hurt by a policeman's baton and he is there to, to be cleaned up. Sissy, who is Harry's sister and she is a militant trade union organizer. So she is also one of the family. She is also there and we can see the, we can see there is uh, an undercurrent of antagonism between Sissy and, Sissy and Sarah. Ada, she is only 14 years old and the whole day instead of staying at relative, she has been acting as, an, as a messenger. Uh, so only uh, we can say Harry was there who has not directly participated in the activity. Harry returns, Sarah returns and uh, there is we can say a fierce row between Harry and uh, Sarah because Sarah thinks that Harry has not contributed anything. In the second act, the immediate post-war period, Khans have resettled in an aging public house block of flats. Political commitment is now in something of a crisis because their children have not stood up to their potential. Roni, who is a bright and lively high school student, she is uh, he is out delivering leaflets because May Day demonstration. So still they are doing their bit in communist, uh, we can say, ideology. Ada is rather disillusioned because she has married Dave, uh, another young student, but he after fighting in the Spanish Civil War, he was drafted into British Army and yet he is not uh, being demobilized. Sarah is still involved in trade union activities. Harry, he is losing one job after the another and he is because he is unemployed, he is fed up, he is disillusioned and already given up. Now in third act, uh, which is eight years later, in 1955, Sarah is struggling with welfare forms. Harry, who has second stroke, heart stroke, and he has become senile and incontinent. Monty Black, he was once their neighbor and once has sympathy with communist ideas but now he is a prosperous shopkeeper and uh, he feels embarrassed by his communist party membership. The final scene is once again after 13 months, Sarah has brought Prince, Jaime and Sissy together because Roni is supposed to be returning from Paris where he has been working as a chef. But the actuality, actuality is that, that Roni has been said he has given up his job and has renounced communism also. The last scene is very important one because Sarah gave a very long final speech in her defense. The curtain falls on Sarah as a sort of survivor. Her beliefs have withstood everything. All the others have fallen away. Okay, moving ahead with our third play of this video, Loot, which is we can say a comedy of uh, a, we can, a kind of grotesque comedy, black comedy and uh, slightly associated with theater of uh, uh, violence. It, it was written by Joe Orton who was a working class gay playwright and his outrageous black comedies it scandalized theater audiences in the 60s. 
when he was just 18 he joined the academy the academy which was a platform where he met Kenneth Halliwell Kenneth Halliwell was the man who initially become his friend collaborator then his lover and finally he was the man who murdered Joe Orton Orton and Halliwell wrote a number of unsuccessful works together Loot was Orton's third major play first being, first being entertaining Mr Sloan and then the good and faithful servant now uh, Orton's Bacchanalian now Bacchanalian means of uh, which we can say a comedy a play in which moral issues are taken care of there the hypocrisy uh, is exposed on social and uh, sexual convention reaches full height in his final play what the butler saw now the original title of for this play was funeral games it is a black comedy now what is a black comedy a blend of comic and grotesque in which those things which are generally considered tabooed or hallowed they are mocked that they are treated in a very blatant light manner the play opens immediately before the burial of Mrs. McLevy, who, who was a middle class British woman and she has just died. Her husband and her nurse Faye, they are on stage with the coffin. Humorous treatment of death is epitomized. You can understand what the black comedy is in the opening scene herself when Faye proposes to her husband and Mr. McLevy explains that I can't think of second marriage just after three days of my wife's death, not for some emotional reason, but because he is busy with the funeral. Hall, who is son of McLevy's, along with his friend Dennis, they decide to rob a bank that is next to the funeral home where Dennis works. They succeed. Dennis works in that bank. The, now they need a place to hide the loot and they decide to go to Hall's place. Following the police, which is led by Inspector Truscott, uh, they are basically very much uh, on the chase and in desperation, they hit the stolen cash in the coffin of Mrs. McLevy. Their callous use of the coffin leads to a lot of mishaps, which involves even mistreatment of the cops. Now you can understand the rattling experience of the audience when they see uh, the treatment of a hallowed dead body in a very callous manner. Dennis and Hall, they must protect their treasure from Faye. Now Faye, who is a nurse, is actually a serial killer who marries men and then kills them taking their money. Inspector Truscott, when he is bribed, he assists Hall and Dennis in avoiding arrest and throughout the play, Arton actually questions what it means to be criminal. Hall manages to convince the inspector that his father, Mr. McLevy, is most likely suspect and the play ends with McLevy taken into custody. So this short, stingy play is, we can say, the 60s mode of disillusionment is once again presented. Moving to the last play of this video, Lear by Edward Bond, as the title itself indicates that it is reworking of Shakespeare's classic. Now, Edward Bond is one of the most powerful exponent of the political left theater. So he is one like Arnold Wester, but he is radical in his treatment. He was associated with the Royal Court Theater, uh, which was, we can say, uh, the great instrument in the development of the fringe writers. Bond has written or directed number of plays, The Pope's Wedding, Saved, Narrow Road to Deep North, Early Morning, Lear, The Sea and Bingo. Bingo is again Shakespearean in its theme and just like Lear. Now Bond looks at his work, the term he uses is rational theatre. Remember this term, we remember this particular use, rational theatre, which is aimed to raise questions as political thinker, but there is refusal to supply answers as political playwrights. So this is, and sometimes they, they call his theatre theatre of cruelty also inspired by Arthur. 
Now Bond presents here as a neurotic dictator who wants to build a wall. Wall is a kind of a, we can say central metaphor of this play and he wants to build this to protect his country from enemies. One is Duke of North and other is Duke of Cornwall. In the opening scene, Lear sees the body of a workman. His primary concern is not about the death of the workman but about the delay to the process of building. The foreman explains the cause of death, uh, an axe fell on his head and Lear is totally indifferent and nonchalant to this particular thing. He has two daughters, three uh, bodies and Fontenelle. They are against Lear's violence and they support uh, both his enemies, Duke of North and Cornwall and they make their daring decision to marry them because they believe their marriage will lead to peace. Obviously, Lear is outraged by this idea and instead of uh, blessing his daughter, he cursed them by saying, I have no daughters. And with this, he leaves with his advisor, Warrington, by cursing them fatally. The war is set between these two parties. Warrington also tries to convince Lear not to fight because they are old, because they are fighting with their own blood. But Lear rejects this again harshly and proclaiming that his daughters are outlaws. Bardis and Fontenelle both are dissatisfied with their married life. Both want to destroy each other as well as their husband, marry Warrington and run the country through him. Civil war follows. The army succeeds in overthrowing the king. Warrington survives the war but due because he knows the secret of both uh, sisters, he needs to be silenced. Then Fontenelle has his tongue removed, the two women then watch while he is tortured. Second phase of the play opens in the wilderness. Lear is befriended by a grave digger's boy who takes him to his pig farm. Lear is very much satisfied there under the cloak of anonymity, but the grave digger's boy's wife, <coughs> Padelia, who is pregnant. He has a debate regarding the shelter he has given to Leah because Cordelia is frightened of the filthy old man. While they all sleep, Warrington appears. He attempts to stab Lear but he fails so he hides back in a nearby well. Lear awakes to see the arrival of a carpenter, John, who is in love with Cordelia, who has brought a cradle for the child Cordelia is expecting. Now the wife of farmer John has told her that the water of the well is, seems to be polluted, unclean. So he tries to fetch water and discovers that Warrington has fallen in the well and broken his neck. He attempts to bring the body to the surface but soldiers soon arrive and they, uh, to arrest Lear. Now what happens in a horrific climax to the first act, the soldiers murder the farmer, rape Cordelia and carpenter John when returns, he kills the soldier. Lear is arrested and stands trial before his daughters, the judge declares him insane and sentences him to imprisonment. Bodice and Fontenelle then turn their attention to an uprising which is led by Cordelia. In prison, Lear is visited by the ghost of Gravedigger's boy and Lear and the ghost share their sufferings and Lear come to realize that his children are what he has brought them up to, along with the ghost of Lear's daughter as they were when they were young, not of the now. Cordelia, now she has married John and the army continue in their fight against Bodice and Fontenelle and her power is dwindling. In the final throes of their rule, the, the two sisters both arrest their husbands, dukes who try to escape and sign Lear's death warrant. Fontenelle is caught by Cordelia's soldier. She is imprisoned with her father who fails to recognize her. Cordelia's husband now orders Fontenelle to be shot. Lear watches her autopsy. 
Boris is also arrested, is bayoneted to death by soldiers, the prison doctor wishing to gain advan advancement with the new administra administration makes Lear political ineffective by uh, removing his eyes. So it's a very cruel scene. This is actually the cover also where this kind of uh, work is done on the cover page. The grave digger's boy form is now occupied by Thomas or Tom, his pregnant wife Susan and John. In their home they sheltered Lear despite Susan's reluctance. Now Lear speaks in public and large group of people come to listen. Cordelia who has order, ordered the, re, the reconstruction of the wall and she sees his speeches as dangerous to state security. Lear, recognizing his earlier mistake, informs her, wall is of no value in the creation of a society. Cordelia refuses to listen and the final scene shows Lear climbing the wall, attempting to pull it down, a farmer's son whom he has met earlier, now a junior officer in the army, shoots Lear who dies at the wall. So uh, this play shows the political ineffectuality of reformation. A very important thing uh, I will talk about is Lear which is an example of epic theatre. It was found by German theatre director Ivan Pisketer and it was popularized by Bert Bertolt Brecht. This type of drama was devoted to the expression of political ideas and it was reaction against both well-made play which had a neat plot and melodrama which has extreme emotions. The chief aim of the epic theatre is to make sure the audience is always conscious of the fact they are watching a play, not we can say watching reality but a play so that they could reflect on the action critically. And for this Brett developed the A effect or alienation effect which created a sense of detachment in the audience from the action of the play. In Lear also characters periodically speak to audience rather than to one another. This sort of speech is called an aside and it contributes to the alienation effect. Okay friends, this was all for today. In this video, we have discussed these four plays and please give your valuable opinions and feedback so that we can make uh, these videos more worthy of your time. Thank you dear friends.